Hmm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Arkham Horror. Let's get into this. Uh, so I just deleted a little token. I'm, I'm, the reason why these videos are taking quite a long time to come out is because I keep working on the mod as I go, adding features and changing stuff. But we are now, that's why this is a beta thing, but we're in round three or four or something. So the first thing we need to do is move our guy up. We've almost done half the investigators. Now we're in an all right position. We've got four doom tokens on the board, but what I'm really worried about now is the gate set up. We have five gates before we lose. We already have four on the board. One, two, three, four. So we have to close gates immediately or we're going to lose. Plus, uh, we're going to start getting monster surges soon. And when we get monster surges, we're in a lot of trouble because we've already got one in the sky. And we only have a monster limit of 11. And because we're playing an eight player game, there's an outskirts limit of zero. Oh, big pardon. Which means every single monster that spawns above 11, so 12 and up, will raise this threat. So this threat meter can move massively. Now we are going to close one gate this turn with the elder sign. And we have the possibility of closing a gate this, next, this turn as well if we're lucky enough to draw a an elder sign so we'll have to see how that goes we've got people in here to draw elder sign to draw tokens but what i really need to do is kill monsters i think is the is a priority we because we, we can definitely close one gate this turn so we're not going to be in fear of losing this turn anyway let's get into it dexter is at two sanity so we need to kind of move him up now he can move quite a lot. He can move five spots in one turn. He's got nothing that needs movement points. So he can go one, two, three, four, five. He can actually get in there this turn. So let's go one, two. And he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, all the way to Arkham. Asylum. That's why he's got so much uh, movement, I think, is so he can do that. Okay, now Vincent, where's Vincent? Oh, he's still at South Church. Oops, I'm using the wrong keyboard. I'm using the very clicky, I love to type on it keyboard. Let's move over to the quieter keyboard. Ah, uh, that's a bit better. Okay, so Vincent, he's in South Church. I don't know what to do with this guy. He's got an Enchanted Blade and he's got a Revolver. I think he's going to go kill this ghost. This is Physical Immunity, so he's only got four combat. Oh, he's got uh, Holy Water, plus six combat. Okay. Yeah, so he's going to go one, two, up into here, and that's where the man in black is. We're going to ignore that. So let's kill this monster. Now, we don't really worry about his sanity because it's negative. He, he oh no, it's stamina that he gets back, isn't it? So what do we need here? We need minus three to attack. So I, I'm going to go one, two, and just pump up his attack value. And he's just going to lose the sanity check straight away versus this ghost. So he's going to move down there. And now he's going to attack back. So he has three attack plus one, two, three, four, five, six from the holy water. And it's negative three for the modifiers. So that's six dice to get two successes. This is actually a fairly hard roll. He has no, oh, he's got plus one fight. So we've actually got uh, seven dice. 
Yeah, so... Come on, we need two successes. Ooh, come on. Booyah, nice. Okay, so that monster is dead. Beautiful. Um, I just forgot that I used the holy water, so I've got to discard that and get rid of it as well. Just, uh, if you see that pop onto his board later on, that's because I did that after I was editing the video because I forgot about it. Now we have this bloke. Now he has got had this monster. Uh, he's had this monster cleared. Now does he have any good spells? He's got shriveling, which is a plus six. He's also got wither, which is a plus three. So he's got for one sanity cost. He's got uh, quite a huge amount here. What's his sanity at the moment? He's got, he's got four, four sanity left. Well, Mandy can kill... God, Mandy hasn't got much power. She's only got two combat. How much does this thing cost? One to kill. So Mandy can kill the backy, so he doesn't need to go... I'm going to go to the science building. That's one, two, three. Now he has plus one sneak, so let's move, we've got to move that up. And I think I might move his luck down one. Just give him one extra luck for this turn. Okay, now Jenny is going to stay where she is. She's not going to change anything because she's going to, she's just going to park out at the unnameable until she can close it. Now Amanda, okay, Amanda is going to... Uh, where's this thing at again? The East Town Streets. Perfect. Okay, so the way this card works is that it's got six clues on it. You go to the East Town Streets, you spend, for every clue you spend, you remove one from this board. But what the cool thing is, is once you've removed all the tokens, every single investigator gets one unique item. So, uh... One, two, three, she needs. She has a movement of just one, two. And I think I'll put a fight up one. Now what I'm also gonna do is while she was in the same location with uh, these two people, she is going to trade the enchanted knife over here to Gloria. And then she's going to spend three clues. That's one, two, three clues gone. And basically, uh, Caroline's going to do the same thing. One, two, three. So she needs... Oh, wait, she's got a motorcycle that gives her two. Two movement points, spend two movement points. Spend two, spend two. Sort of glory. Okay, so she's gonna go two up like that. So she's got three movement points, including the, four movement points, including the motorcycle. Uh, well, actually, so we only need three points, right? So let's go speed there. She's got two focus, and I'll put her fight up one. Okay, and she's going to spend one, two, three clues. And also take out that. So this is now completed, right? So every single player draws a unique item and this is actually goes into the player box like it doesn't you can't redraw this rumor so i'm just going to right click and delete it get rid of that and we get rid of the token okay so starting with caroline boom and just drawing uh thing for everybody healing stone that's pretty lame 
Oh, Elder Sign. Beautiful. That's very cool. Okay. Okay, King in Yellow. Great. Ancient Tablet. Great. No. Perfect. Another Elder Sign. That's like the perfect draw. An awarding statue. Okay, so we got an elder sign for Jenny. That is like the best possible draw we could have gotten. That's amazing. Okay, so that's working out. And now it is Gloria's turn. And she's going to go monster hunting. So she's going to go one. To, uh, before she does it, during her upkeep. Let's have a look at her upkeep. Uh... What are these monsters? We're going to go fight both the Vampire and the Maniac. Okay, so it's negative zero here, right? She's got plus one speed, so she only needs through... How much movement does she need? One, two, three. So she's already at two. She doesn't need to do any movement because she's plus one speed. So the first thing I think we're going to do is we're going to keep a law up and I'm actually just going to put a fight up as well to do this fight. And before her turn during her upkeep, she's going to type, uh, going to cast Voice of Ra. You may cast again plus one to all skill checks for the rest of the turn. So this is, she's got a law of four, so that means she rolls three dice. And we're looking for one success. Come on. Come on. Beautiful. So we're now plus one to all skill rolls because of Voice of Ra. And we lose one sanity. Okay. So then she goes one, two, three, and fights all these monsters. So we'll start with the Maniac. There's no horror check at all. And it's plus one to attack. Now this text basically says that when there's uh, uh, at least six terror, he gets a lot tougher. He gets three stamina and uh, it's minus two for the checks and stuff. So it's got to kill this guy early. Anyway, so let's work out her dice pool. For starters, she's got, this guy does not have any kind of resistances. So we're going to use the four, the automatic and we're going to cast Wither, which is a casting moderate of fire of zero and has no sanity cost. This is one of the best spells in the entire game. It's one-handed because it's a spell, and that means that when you've got one-handed weapons, you can really stack actually higher than even the powerful two-handed weapons if you've got Wither. So anyway, whatever. So she has four lore, but remember she's got plus one from Voice of Ra, so five. Come on, come on. Oh, God, I thought we weren't going to get it for a second there. Okay, so that's plus three and four. That's seven. Then she's plus one from the voice of Ra. And then she's plus three from her fight. And then she's also plus one from the actual monster. So we have 12 die to get one success. So this should pulverize him. <laughs> okay, beautiful. We absolutely murderize this guy. And this one's gonna be a little harder. So this one is a will check of zero. So his will is two, but remember it's plus one because of voice of Ra. So that gives her three dice for one success. Come on. Ooh, beautiful. Look at that. Three successes. Man, I am rolling so well. And now undead and it's got physical resistance. Now physical resistance halves physical damage. But we traded the Enchanted Blade this turn, which is a magical weapon. And of course, Wither is a magical spell, so that won't help. 
It was a beast born in the grave. It stretched its hands towards us and curled its lips, drawn to the blood in our veins. <laughs> but it's minus three to combat. It's a hugely hardcore monster, this, I think. So, we have three, four uh, dice from our fight plus voice of Ra. Oh, I've got to roll for Wither first, don't I? So that is five die, because we've got four Law, plus one for Voice of Ra. Come on. Oh, look at that. We actually missed uh, Wither modifier. So I'm going to use Mandy's ability, uh, which allows us to do a reroll. I can't believe we five dice and we missed. Okay. So now we've got Wither. So that's plus three. And then Enchanted Knife is also plus three. So we start with six. Then we have one, two, three, fight, plus one using Voice of Ra. So we have 10 dice, and then it's minus three. One, two, three. Now we need two successes to kill this guy. We take three damage. And we've got no re-rolls. But we get four successes, so everything's good. See, so she has six clues, but we need them for gate closing. Booyah. So that is the end of that. Nice. Okay, so... Did I skip Mandy's turn? Yeah, I completely skipped Mandy's turn for some reason. She is at the witch's house using the explored token so she won't get sucked through. But she actually came out last turn, which means that she does have to deal with this backer key. Now... I really want to kill this monster because if this monster flies into the sky, it'll be really hard for us to kill. And I th basically, because we're getting eight, whenever you get a monster surge, right, you get a surge of equal to your gate count on the table or your player count, whichever is higher, or your captured gates, one of the two. The point is almost every monster surge, we're going to get eight monsters at a time. Right? And our limit is only 11. So basically, if we get three, if we get uh, four monsters in the sky, then every single monster surge is going to raise a terror level. Because remember, we can't fight them up here unless they uh, fly down to us. So I want to kill this guy while I've got the chance. I should have killed him ages ago. I only just thought of it like last turn. Okay. So... It shrieked and flapped its wings. I thought of an empty shell of a beetle and the soft loam of rotting earth. It cocked its carapace head at me, black teeth clicking against each other. <laughs> okay, so first thing we have a sanity of negative one. Oh, wait, I haven't done her movement either, have I? So she doesn't need, doesn't need move. Put up her uh, combat and she doesn't have any... any thing to fight so that's really bad okay so that's what we're going to leave what I might do is I might put her, her speed up by one with her second focus and we've already used her reroll ability so fight will is minus one so she gets to roll one die or she gets one sanity come on Whoa, so unlucky okay so that's one sanity and now we need one hit and it's a zero modifier. So she has three plus she has the Derringer, which is plus two. She's got five tokens. Now we don't want to spend a clue if we can help it. So come on. Can we do this? This is the hardest roll. Bam! Come on. One success. You can do it. Come on. Oh, beautiful. Wow, we're rolling like madmen today. Boom, he's dead as well. Okay, so that's not too bad. Right, uh, healing stone, awesome. Okay, so let's do the actual events. 
So he is going to spend $2 at Arkham and to regain all his sanity. So that's just one, two. And he's going to get back up to full sanity. This guy is in the street, so nothing. This guy is at the science building. And he's got an ancient tomb. As you enter the Department of Alchemy, a professor looks up in horror. He grabs an ancient artifact from a locked drawer on his desk and holds it up before your face, chanting and making symbolic motions with the item. If you are cursed, discard the curse. If you are not cursed, you are blessed. Oh my gosh. Bam. Beautiful. Uh, what is it? Bless. There we are. Boom. Okay, so that was worth going to the science building. <laughs> what have we got here? Jenny is going to spend one sanity and one stamina to do the elder sign. So when sealing a gate, lose one and one. You do not need to make skill check and uh, spend tokens and everything. And actually, I think this is actually discarded from the game completely. Return this guard to the game box. Yep, so I'll get rid of that. And the important thing is we actually lose a doom token, which is freaking sweet. She gets the gate trophy. And we have our first L sign. Boom. Okay, Amanda's in the street, Caroline is in the street, and this girl is going to do the exact same thing. Because she's also got an Elder Sign. So that's minus Sanity, minus Stamina. Get rid of the Elder Sign. She was at the Witch House, wasn't she? No. Where was she? She was at the Witch House, right? Yeah. And boom. So we've sealed two pretty common gates. I really want to get rid of this uh, Platter of Wang. This is one of the ones we've really got to get rid of asapily because uh, it's, uh, it's a very high frequency gate. Probably this one. Okay, so Black Cave, the Witch House, and the Woods, I think, are the most of the highest frequency gates, or maybe even the Historical Society. Okay, whatever. And Gloria is also in the streets, so she doesn't have a turn. And that is the end of that. Let's do the Mythos card now. Yablamo. All monsters in Northside Streets locations are returned to the cup. Oh, that's up here. There is nothing there. Okay. Okay, so Swilver Twilight Lodge gets a do uh, a thingo. Liar minus three. Now remember, we have to use an elder sign for that because Yog Sogoth is the difficulties of all gate closing is increased by one. So that's actually minus four. It's hugely difficult. Okay, so that gets a doom token. And we would draw two monsters. One, two. Oh, look at that. My gal and an elder thing. Okay, so we have circles moving on white and diamonds and squares moving. So what have we got here? We've got a diamond. So that moves up into here. Uh, what's this activity? This is supposed to be at the French Hills. I don't know what this activity is for. Confuse myself. I hope I did all this correctly. Why did I have that thing at Northside? I think that's where the... I think I thought that the black man was in Northside for the whole game. I'll have to add a little function in the scripts that when uh, when you clear these cards, if there's activity markers, it clears the activity markers on the boards as well. Okay, whatever. So the elder thing has moved into the same place as the doctor. Uh, we have another one here. 
we have a star is the only one in the sky and this guy also flies so he actually moves okay so the way flying works is if there's a guy in the adjacent street he moves to him otherwise he moves to the sky so both these guys are actually in the streets with the doctor which is pretty annoying this guy especially minus three he actually only has three sanity left so this will kill him and this guy's too harsh okay that's that then uh, we have a clue at the graveyard and that's it that's the end of this round we did extremely well that turn we had a bit of luck we we had a we had the the real luck we had was with jenny jenny getting the uh oh, i always keep forgetting to give her the extra money i wonder how many times i've forgotten to give her that money upkeep jenny gains one dollar yeah but uh her actually getting the the elder sign from that card really helped us it basically oh wait I didn't take the Doom Token off for here, right? So we should have only three, because I should have taken two Doom Tokens off, because I put out two Elder Signs. Awesome. And anyway, that just means that we saved a turn for Jenny, which is awesome. Now that uh, now that this has an Elder Sign, we can, we can start doing events at the Unnameable again, and clues will appear there. So hopefully we're going to start drawing some monsters, some gates that turn up at our Elder Signs. There are no gate bursts in the base set, which is really cool. Anyway, that's the end of that, and I'll see you guys next time.